Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Amarjit Singh from Department of Physics, Himachal Pradesh University. Today we are going to discuss about module Surface Physics Characterization Techniques 2 from paper Solid State Physics. So uh, student, let us see what we are going to learn in this module. So we are going to learn X-ray reflectivity formalism and phenomena of total external reflection. Uh, and uh, reflectivity from from flat and uh, rough surfaces and the role of uh, roughness in the reflectivity also we will know that uh, uh, how to calculate the reflectivity of a thin film uh, analyze its analysis scheme and uh, what are the advantages and disadvantages of x-ray reflectivity and we will also explore other complementary uh, surface sensitive uh, techniques uh, we will just uh, I'll just touch upon it such as neutron uh, reflectivity and GID. Uh, in this module I will talk about grazing incidence x-ray scattering techniques. Uh, I will first introduce what is grazing incidence is all about to analyze the morphology and the structure of interfaces and thin films. Uh, these are called indirect techniques because we need to analyze the data to get information such as thickness, roughness and surface structure. In last modules, uh, we learned about AFM and STM which are probe based techniques for direct measurement of the surface morphology. However, these probe based techniques only look at the top surface morphology. Uh, in thin films, uh, we have crucial information on uh, crystalline uh, of, of the crystalline order, the roughness of buried interfaces that can't be probed with the AFM and STM. Uh, in that case, grazing incidence techniques such as grazing incidence, X-ray scattering, uh, GID, X-ray reflectivity and neutron reflectivity which can uh, indeed probe the buried layers inside become very helpful in the analysis of uh, uh, thin films and uh, the structure of interfaces. Uh, these techniques are called surface sensitive technique as X-ray penetrate only a few atomic layers in grazing incidence. I will discuss here X-ray reflectivity mainly and uh, will also briefly touch upon neutron reflectivity and GID. X-ray reflectivity here we see that uh, we have an X-ray impinging on a surface with an angle incident theta and uh, the refractive index N can be represented as 1 minus delta minus I beta. This is the refractive index for X-rays where delta is uh, the scattering power and beta represents the observation here. So here you can see that this is a summation which is going over k which means if you have uh, several kinds of atomic species uh, one can sum over their atomic numbers and uh, densities uh, and all and finally get the average delta which is uh, dependent on lambda the wavelength of incident light and electron density average electron density of the material and beta is uh, dependent of the absorption coefficient mu and uh, beta is comparatively the very small as compared to delta almost two orders of magnitude is smaller. On this slide we see that if we write the real part of the refractive index which is 1 minus delta. So this is telling us that the refractive index of a medium is less than 1 which is the uh, refractive index which is less than the refractive index of vacuum or air for x-rays. So this is the phenomena. So when this happens, what happens? A phenomena of total external reflection takes place. So on the other side, you can see that the Snell's law, the equations are written there and N0 is a refractive index of air and uh, N1 is a refractive index of medium and this theta 0 and theta 1 are the respective angles. So when such thing happens, this total external reflection, so this uh, scattered wave 
is not penetrating into the sample and it makes an angle 0. So we can find out the critical angle which is dependent on the electron density. Just when we see the phenomena in the ordinary light, you, we all are uh, aware that ex uh, total internal reflection takes place and there because the ray is going from denser to rare medium. But here you can see that medium is rather working as a rare medium as compared to the vacuum for x-rays. So the total external uh, reflection takes place in, in case of uh, instead of total internal reflection here. It is important to talk about here regarding the surface sensitivity of uh, x-rays. Uh, x-rays uh, can penetrate several hundreds of microns into the specimen. It has a great penetrating power. It is a high energy radiation. But we know that we uh, this uh, x-rays uh, have a phenomena known as total external reflection just as we have learned it. And uh, due to this factor, we can make this incidence angle of uh, x-rays on the surface less than the critical angle. If it is less than the critical angle, then the x-rays are totally reflected back into the same medium. So here you can see in this figure, we have calculated the penetration depth as a function of incident angle into uh, water. The formula for calculating penetration depth is written here as uh, gamma alpha in terms of this alpha, alpha c and uh, beta. And uh, uh, you can see that this penetration depth uh, increases as we increase the incident angle. And at a angle of 0 0.1 degree, the penetration depth is about 70 angstrom. So 70 angstrom is just a 7 nanometer. So the, uh, this technique is really surface sensitive. If we are probing uh, the surface, then uh, x-rays are penetrating only 7 nanometer into the surface. So we are getting information only uh, from the surface of the specimen. That is why this technique can be made really surface sensitive. In this slide, I will be talking about the reflectivity of x-rays from a flat surface. Now you can see that this uh, reflectivity is defined as r theta is equal to i theta upon i0 where i theta is, is a measured intensity as a function of theta and i0 is a incident intensity. And uh, below this expression, you can see that this uh, reflectivity, this theta can be converted into qz. This qz is a wave vector along the vertical direction by using this formula qz is equal to 4 pi upon lambda sine theta. And uh, we find that for larger value of qz, this reflectivity falls as qz raised to the power 4. And uh, uh, if you see this picture, this uh, in this picture qc is represented here arrow. So initially this reflectivity is flat and then it falls down. So this flat region represents the total external reflection. After that the x-rays begin to penetrate into the sample and that is how we get the reflectivity of a flat surface. In this slide I will discuss about the reflectivity from a rough surface. In the last slide, we saw, we have seen that uh, the reflectivity from a flat surface. Now, you can see in this figure, in this diagram, that a surface is a kind of rough all the time, and this is uh, uh, represented by the equation below, where there is an average surface represented by this line, and this deviation from this average surface is represented in terms of sigma. So the sigma represents the average roughness of the surface and uh, as we know that even the surface of a pure water or atomically flat surface have a minimum roughness in terms of angstrom or atomic scale roughness. So that roughness is always present in this specimens but there can also be higher roughness. So uh, finally we calculate reflectivity for rough surfaces in terms of uh, reflectivity from flat surfaces multiplied by this exponential factor of the roughness. So larger is the roughness, uh, this average roughness, larger the steeper is the fall in the reflectivity as we see on this uh, in this diagram where reflectivity is represented in terms of qz. In this slide, we go beyond that and we talk about the reflectivity from a flat 
in film earlier we were talking about reflectivity just from a flat surface uh, from a single medium but here we have a thin film of different material over a substrate as you can see in the diagram so the reflection takes place first at the air film interface and then at the film substrate interface so this uh, reflection from both the surfaces when we measure at the detector it forms an interference pattern and uh, by calculating the reflectance we can calculate reflectivity just as in this case so we definitely will have as this is a constructive and destructive interference will form depending upon angle of uh, the measurement we will observe uh, bright and dark fringes here which is represented here in the figure as we see that this is a reflectivity profile with oscillations uh, where you have peaks and dips and uh, in periodic fashion so this dips represent the destructive interference of two x rays from two interfaces and this peak represent the constructive interference and uh, this is a signature if we get this oscillation this is a signature that we definitely have a film over a substrate usually the film is so thin that we cannot see is uh, from our eyes it's not observable by even microscope so when you do this scan and you see that oscillations are there you become sure that the film is there and uh, we can estimate the thickness of the film by inverse of this uh, QZ as you can see in the figure uh, before analysis we can just have uh, estimation of thickness uh, from the thickness of the fringes using this formula d is equal to 2 pi upon delta Q. Analysis of X-ray reflectivity. So here we go little further and uh, we here discuss that how the reflectivity of a multilayer or a system with graded electron density can be probed with X-ray reflectivity. So this is um, a model dependent analysis uh, we do and uh, we break this entire specimen into smaller layers and uh, we assume a model at first that uh, these are the estimated electron density of the system then we calculate the reflectivity the total reflectivity uh, using this scheme and uh, then we uh, compare it with uh, the measured reflectivity which we have measured in the experiment and then we use the algorithm to fit this data uh, to minimize the difference between this calculated electron uh, calculated reflectivity profile and measured re reflectivity profile so we have to leave some parameters floating so when we get this floating uh, when the fitting is complete we get this uh, parameters in the end such as thickness roughness and electron density profile so that way that we analyze the data so we can uh, really have information about the multilayer systems or systems with electron density graded systems. Okay, so uh, we have now uh, just uh, uh, learned a few aspects of X-ray reflectivity, but uh, let me tell you what are the advantages of uh, these techniques. So it gives information on film thickness, electron density profile along vertical direction, and average roughness of the surface and it can measure thickness with very high precision uh, of the order of two angstrom let us say if you change the thickness of the film by that order it can be detected by axial reflectivity and uh, we can determine the electron density profile of multilayers and roughnesses of buried interfaces uh, uh, from this analysis and also this is a non-destructive technique especially for hard condensed matter things but sometimes if the beam intensity is high it can be destructive for polymers and organic systems but we have to be careful by minimizing the intensity we can make it non-destructive for organic systems also now okay uh, so much about the advantages and good thing about x-ray reflectivity now let me uh, tell you a few points uh, what are the disadvantages uh, on this side so it gives an average information of thickness roughness and electron density profile just in just like you saw that in AFM and, and STM you could really probe the surface morphology you could see the roughness and see the local areas here we get the average information 
and not the local information. And if the structure of the film is complex, it becomes sometimes difficult to analyze the data due to non-uniqueness of the fitting. So this fitting procedure is not unique. It gives us a non-unique solutions. So we have to pick up the best solution depending on the information from the other techniques. And large roughness, when the roughness uh, of the surface is very large, say uh, uh, larger than 10 angstrom, then it can really destroy the X-ray reflectivity data and uh, the analysis can really become very difficult. And uh, uh, the alignment of the sample is very crucial here because we are dealing with very small angles and very small thickness. So if there is a slight misalignment, we don't observe a good reflectivity and uh, the analysis that's why suffers. And uh, also a sufficient electron density contrast is required between two media. So when we have let us say several multi layers, so if there is not sufficient electron density uh, contrast, we the reflectivity will not come out to be good. Now uh, uh, let me just uh, touch upon here uh, the neutron reflectivity. So neutron reflectivity is, is a complementary uh, technique here. Uh, so in, in neutron reflectivity, neutron beam is used in place of X-ray beam. Rest of the formula remains the same as we discussed before. So question is why to use neutron reflectivity at all? Uh, in some cases, the poor electron density contrast between two layers of uh, hydrocarbons or organic samples make it difficult for X-rays to distinguish the interface. But uh, we have an option in neutron ref reflectivity to enhance the scattering contrast uh, by chemically replacing the hydrogen with the deuterium in, in one system and for neutron then hydrogen and deuterium provide a sufficiently good contrast and we can get really a good reflectivity. In this slide we uh, have shown the geometrical setup for grazing incidence x-ray diffraction. So first let us uh, talk about the uh, usual x-ray diffraction we work in our laboratory usually we make theta to theta scan and uh, we keep the system in a specular geometry and scan this uh, sample and theta to obtain the diffraction as incident versus uh, incident intensity versus 2 theta here gid setup because we want to measure the structure or we want to analyze the structure of a film only on the surface only a few nanometers below the surface so first we have to make it surface sensitive by choosing a low incident angle as we have learned that when you have a low incident angle a smaller than critical angle then this total external reflection takes place and uh, as you can see in this uh, diagram that we keep this uh, angle of incidence fixed and uh, the sample can be rotated along this z axis and also this detector arm which you can see that it can be rotated in plane and uh, out of plane so that we have information of uh, a crystalline system in the plane and in the vertical plane though in the vertical plane there is not much thickness but uh, still uh, there are there can be few layers which can give us uh, the repeated pattern and uh, you can see here on the other side this uh, two-dimensional layer which looks like a, a langmuir blodgett system where you have a hydrophilic head into the water or on the substrate and the hydrophobic tail going up. So this uh, you have an incident beam and a specular beam. So in a specular beam you observe in the same line of incident beam just like you do in uh, normal x-ray XRD but uh, the other arrow which is shown as diffracted beam this um, shows the, the in-plane variation of this uh, angle in the plane and by rotating the detector or the sample we can satisfy this Bragg condition 2D sin theta and lambda several times and uh, the, we can really map the structure of a surface or thin films. And uh, important thing to note here is that it is not only the solid surfaces but we can directly uh, perform this uh, experiment uh, this measurements on uh, liquid surfaces also so on this slide 
we discuss the basic requirement of uh, GID. This uh, high intensity of X-ray source is required first of all. So therefore, uh, we cannot do it in uh, using this uh, normal uh, uh, seal tube sources. We need high intense sources. The, nowadays, it is possible to generate these high intensity sources in laboratory also. But usually, this GID is uh, very popular at uh, synchrotron um, sources. So, synchrotron sources are uh, basically sources with uh, very high intensity sources. They have a strong brilliance, a strong larger coherence and can have polarized beam and uh, pulsed radiation. So, here I just uh, would like to just uh, briefly tell the audience that uh, the students that there uh, are um, a very large number of synchrotrons now around the world if, if you look, but the prominent ones uh, around the world are this advanced photon source in Argonne, USA. European synchrotron radiation facility in, in Grenoble, France and Springgate in Japan. And in India, we have Indus 1 and Indus 2 beamline and uh, RRCAT in India. So, these are the strong X-ray sources and uh, we can use these sources to do uh, surface science, surface analysis and uh, nano science and nanotechnology oriented work can be performed. So, uh, students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. Uh, when X-ray falls on a surface with incident angle smaller than critical angle, then total, uh, total external reflection occurs which make it a surface sensitive technique. And uh, we also learned that uh, reflectivity of flat surface falls as fourth power of wave vector transfer. Uh, and uh, for rough surface, it falls even faster. The larger the roughness, the steeper the fall, we can say. And uh, the thickness and electron density profile of the film deposited on a surface can be analyzed using model dependent algorithms. And the accuracy with which the thickness can be determined is, is very good. And uh, we remember that here we are getting the average information of the uh, uh, surface and if the surface roughnesses or interfacial roughnesses are uh, very high then uh, it can really uh, destroy the reflectivity pattern and we do not see any oscillations which we used to see. So these are uh, the, the uh, techniques which uh, can be used to study the film thickness the maximum thickness we can use possibly with the technique is uh, uh, some thousand uh, of angstrom, maybe two thousand angstrom. If the thickness is larger than that, it is going beyond one thousand angstrom or two thousand angstrom. Maybe uh, uh, if you, if I speak in terms of nanometer, let us say two hundred nanometer is the upper limit. So, here with these techniques, we are talking about uh, only the films which are less than uh, 100 nanometers and their roughness and we can even analyze the atomic scale roughness. So, these techniques are very sensitive and uh, uh, the, the complementary uh, technique uh, neutron reflectivity works in same way with the with a better contrast that can be generated in organic samples. GID finds a structure of 2D monolayer which cannot be identified from usual XRD machines.